Welcome back. We are on page six of our notes, and we are going to start actually calculating more problems using our RICE framework, our problem solving grid. Now, the key to doing these is first to identify what you have. So either make a list or at least write it above the substance. We may have just some general equilibrium. Typically, that's going to be a general gaseous equilibrium or maybe some general aqueous equilibrium. It could be a soluble salt. You need to recognize your soluble salts. You may have an insoluble salt. Strong acids, next chapter, will come into play. But I want you to realize this framework works for all of these. Weak acids, weak bases, strong bases. Now, those in this column uh, that you would identify, we would do a stoichiometry. And we're going to do stoichiometry calculations prior to equilibria. And those in this column, column are going to require our uh, Rice equilibrium framework that we're going to work on right now. So once you've identified, if you can do that, that's a huge step to problem solving. If you can't identify, you're probably lost at the first few words and you want to come see your consultant, me. Now, um, once we've identified, you want to check every time, do you need to do dilutions? Is there a stoichiometry? Do we have a soluble salt, a strong acid, strong base, or we're going to find out an acid plus a base is also a stoichiometry. Um, do we have any of those? If so, we're going to have to do a stoichiometry first. Then we can sort of do the equilibrium, so to speak. That's what this little dance is showing you. They're doing the equilibrium. Now, uh, that spells out our little checklist is DSE. So we want to go through that each and every time. And we were trying to come up with an acronym for that. So I came up with Dina Saves Everyone. So if you follow this framework, I really think that Dina will save everyone. And I know there's a few of you out there right now that in your mind you went, oh, Dina. <laughs> All right. Now let's take a look at how we use these. So in you do at five, we have a general equilibrium. We don't have any salts, soluble or otherwise. Um, it's all gaseous. Now HI is normally an acid, but only in water. So this is just a general equilibrium. So we want to do our checklist. Dilution, do we need to do a dilution? Did we add volume to volume? So that's what you want to be looking for is one volume added to or changed to a new volume? And the answer is no, we don't have to do that. Do we have to do a stoichiometry? No, not yet. You still want to get into the habit of checking that. Now let's head into our equilibria. Now often, but not always, you will be given the reaction. It is expected that you can do a simple synthesis reaction of elements going to product. So you should be able to handle those. Uh, this time it was given. You won't be given this rice grid to fill in. Uh, you have to learn to write that for yourself, as you will when you do your web assign. Now, this is at a particular temperature. It doesn't say what temperature, but that's important because if you change the temperature, you change K. So that's why temperature is often reported here. Now, in this case, they ask us to calculate K. So you want to get into the habit of writing your expression as part of the very beginning of your problem. So since it gave me molarities, I'm going to use brackets to indicate those molarities. And that's my expression without numbers. Always, always, always write that. Now, do you notice in this case they gave us equilibrium values? So we're going to put that in the E row, the equilibrium row. So H2 is 0 0.012, I2 is 0 0.15, and HI is 0 0.30. Now, in this case, there was just no reason to use the first part of this. We are asked for KC, and as soon as we have our E row filled in, we can plug into KC. So if we plug those values in to this equilibrium expression, you should get KC is equal to 50. And I'm going to assume that you can plug those values in. It'd be 0.3 squared 
over 0.012 times 0.15. I'm going to assume you can do that and move on ahead. Now let's take a look at this next one. This time I'm given a partial pressure of NO and it says calculate KP and KC. So I'm going to start with my KP expression. That's going to be my partial pressure product, NOBR squared over my partial pressures of my reactants. There's two NOs, so I need that squared times my partial pressure of BR2. So that would be my KP expression. Now let's pop into this framework the values that are given. I have a partial pressure of NO. I did not add volume to volume. There's no dilutions. These are all gases and there's no separate stoichiometry. So we did not have to do those. So this was initially 0 0.526 atmospheres. BR2 is initially 0.329. Now, you want to ask yourself, do you have any source of the NOBR? And we don't, and none was given, so that's zero initially. Later on, we'll find that especially stoichiometries will give us values here, but we had no source of NOBR other than what will form in the equilibrium. Now, the next thing it says is our equilibrium partial pressure of BR2. So that's 0 0.203. So I have quite a bit of my grid filled in. So now it's just a little bit of problem solving. If you remember that I plus C is equal to E, right? That's a critical component. Now, this is a 2, 1, 2. Uh, we have to consume reactant and form product because there is not any product to be found. And since this is a 1 here, I'm going to call that minus x. If we multiply by the mole ratio of 2 over 1, this would be minus 2x. And again, multiply by my mole ratios. So when you're at the C row, you use your magic mole ratios. This would be plus 2x. So I'd have 0.526 minus 2x. I already know what this is. And then I have 2x. Now, if I know two of the rows, I can get the third. So since i plus c is equal to e, I can solve for x because 0 0.329 minus x had to be 0 0.203. That's what's shown in this column. So I can solve for x, and I get x is equal to 0.126. Now if I plug that x in along here, I get 0 0.274. If I take 0.526 minus 2 times x, and here I'm going to have point. 252. Now I have all my values in the E column. As soon as you have all values in the E column, you can substitute in. And if you did that substitution, we would find that KP is equal to 4.17. So we've done part of the problem. Now the question also asked us for KC. We saw this equation earlier. And the equation that relates the two is that K in terms of partial pressures is K in terms of molarity times our ideal gas constant times the temperature to the delta N. Now this question didn't give me a temperature. So let's just assume we're talking about a temperature of 298 Kelvin so that we can actually go through the mechanics of this reaction. Uh, we have Kp, we have 4.17, Kc's are unknown, R for this equation is 0.0821. If there's not an energy term in the formula, then you can pretty much use the 0.0821 for R. If there's an energy term, we always use 8.314, and that's times 298 Kelvin to the delta N. Now, let's take a look at that delta N. A delta in science 
is always products minus reactants with one exception that we'll see next uh, towards the end of the nine weeks. And what we're talking about is moles for, because N is moles and we're only going to look at gaseous states. So I have two product gases, two moles of product that's a gas. I'm going to subtract the reactants. I have two moles of NO and it's a gas plus one mole of Br2 and that's a gas. So my delta N is equal to minus one. All right. So that's the same thing as 4.17 is going to equal Kc. If it's to the minus one, that puts it in the denominator, 0 0.0821 times 298, right? If it's to the minus one in the numerator, when I bring it to the denominator, that makes a plus one. And now if you do your cross multiplying, we should get a value of Kc equal to 102. All right, now that's quite a bit to digest there. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this video and then we will move on to the next video where we will continue our discussion of rice.